Hello again and welcome to Sudson Country. Hi, I'm Herb Sudson. I'm very happy to say I have Mr. John Gork on the show. Hi. And welcome to the show, John. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Pleasure on. having you here. John Gork's songs tell of street people, lost love, and opportunity gone by. True? Well, I, I try to write about uh, things that I'm, I'm interested in. I try to write about a lot of different things. So, so those, are, those are some of the things he that I write He tugs at your sleeves and slips into your heart when he sings his gentle songs about people and places, making the subject of his songs very real and familiar. This is quotes from... Oh, but what d different people have said? Yeah. Oh. Is it all true? Well, I, I, <laughs> probably not. Okay. <laughs> Let's talk about Temporary Road, your latest album okay. for Windham Records, okay? Yeah, it's on, it's on Describe cool. what kind of songs we're going to be finding on this album. Let's see, it's kind of little uh, songs of love and war. There's and uh, some songs of crime and punishment and uh, a few things. There's one song about gravy. Hmm. About what? Gravy. Gravy? Yeah. How did the song with gravy uh, oh, get into called, crime and punishment and love and war? Oh, that's, it, it was just an extra, extra subject on there. Oh, yeah? yeah. What, uh, this album shifts you into a wider realm of social commentary and expression of personal joys? Well, yeah, the, the, the love songs on the, on the record are, are happier. It seems like a, yeah. I'm looking more on the bright side of, of love this time. And, uh, and some of the songs uh, were inspired by the Gulf War that, that are yes. in there. In there. Now, what, what are you writing about the Gulf War? What was, can you give oh, us just, an idea? Just of kind of different, uh, some of the, it stirred up a lot of different uh, emotions that I didn't even know that I had, you know, kind of deep and that went deep and kind of were conflicting to uh, you know, feelings of uh, patriotism mixed with, with some uh, deep skepticism that was kind of, uh, that was uh, helped along, I guess, uh, by uh, things that I read and, and heard, heard after the initial the war itself was was going on. Then it, it just seemed like I didn't know who to trust, and mm -hmm. uh, so that's so some some of the songs came out of that. And so that's <coughs> basically you get some ideas from what you read in the papers. You yeah. don't you don't live all your experiences, obviously. Right. Yeah. A lot of it, a lot of what I do, I try to my approach is a personal approach. Okay. And I try to write about things that I know about and uh, things that are true in, in my own experience or or, or emotion emotions that seem true even if they're not my own and from my own life. A lot of your songs come from a sad place but not a bitter place. Yeah, I think, uh, I think the sound, sound of my voice is kind of, it's kind of uh, lends itself uh, pretty well to the, to the sad songs. And I think I've always liked the sad songs the best because uh, I felt like I learned more from, from the sad ones than, than the happy ones. You're not going to be Mr. Sunshine? I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> but, but there are some definitely some uh, happier songs on this one. I tell you, you have a video out from the Temporary Road album. Yeah. It's called I Don't Feel Like a Train. What inspired you to write this? Well, uh, I've been doing a lot of traveling over the, the past few years. Uh, I've been full time as, uh, as a musician for a little over six years and uh, almost constantly on the road for the last four and a half. And uh, I guess I started to feel like all the traveling that I'd been doing was starting to pay off and that I, that I felt like I belonged out there mm. and that uh, I wasn't just kind of rolling over the surface that I was kind of digging in a little bit and, uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, becoming more, a more permanent part of things rather than just rolling, rolling along like a train. I read where you seem to take notice to you, uh, let, me, let me rephrase this. Are we going to notice your keen and subtle wit in this song? Uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how subtle it is. How about your great skills of shaping images and expressions through emotions? Are we well, going to notice that in this song now when we play it? Let's see. Uh, this has got some good lines in okay. it, I think. Because <laughs> the first line is, I don't feel like a train anymore. I feel like the track. Which can, can be taken a couple ways, I guess. Where did where'd you tape that video? That was, uh, at first we were going to do it in, uh, in Illinois. Because uh, I was out, I was out in Minnesota, I think. And uh, they, they were going to, they planned to film it in a wheat field in Illinois. But when they went to check out, the wheat field, I guess the crop had failed so that, that it had ruined it, so they had to go scrambling uh, for another location and I, we ended up uh, taping it 
in uh, Long on Long Island. No, okay. yeah, it's <laughs> a long way from a wheat field. Yeah, it was it was in a, an oat field on a potato farm in okay. in, uh, yeah. in Long Island. <clears throat> how how long did it take you to take? We did it in, in a day. Did it was you? early morning to about the, when it got dark. Okay, Temporary Road is your fourth album, mm -hmm. your third for Windham Hill Records. What does the title song deal with? Well, it's it's uh, it's one of the one of the war songs, I guess. It, it's a uh, it's an image of a, a soldier skating south on a frozen river, and um, I'd never seen a, a river freeze before, a big river freeze before. Mm. I, I spent some time in Minnesota, and I saw the St. Croix River freeze solid enough to, um, mm. so that people not only could, people could walk on it and skate on it, but they would drive their trucks yeah. out on it and go dig holes in the ice and go ice fishing. And it was I, I started the song with the uh, the Panama invasion and. Uh, seeing some some of the young soldiers coming back from that, uh, uh, glad to be home and glad to be in mm -hmm. in, in one piece, uh, uh, kind of skating. So I had that that image of a, a, a soldier skating south on the frozen river, and then I completed it with when the the Gulf War kind of came around again. It's definitely a temporary road. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's your other albums, Jack Crows and uh, Land of the Bottom Line, and I know is your first album. Right. Uh, what has changed on all these albums? Well, uh, the first record was uh, kind of a collection of the different kinds of songs that I, I was writing at the time, and uh, the second, so it was kind of a sampler of, of the kind of songs that I write, and the second one was, was, was maybe a little bit uh, darker, it was more of a broken heart record. What gave uh, you that concept to write a complete? A, a broken heart. A broken heart. <laughs> <laughs> Not exactly what you want to, you know. Well, it wasn't the whole thing, but oh. that's what a lot of the songs kind of came out of. And so that, uh, there was that one, and then uh, and the Jack's Crows was, the, the org songs were, the album was organized around the songs about the places and the people that I, I, I've come from. And uh, uh, this, this part of the world in Pennsylvania and uh, uh, New Jersey, which is from where, I, where I grew up. Yeah. We're all from New Jersey. Yeah. 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 Now, your first album to get airplay was Land of the Bottom Line, your first commercial airplay. What was, what made that jump from the public radio stations to commercial airplay? What well, was in it? I changed record companies. Uh, the, the first one got uh, a very little bit of commercial right. airplay. Uh, Mostly public places. service stations. Yeah, most, yeah, and, and college and college. that kind of thing. Uh, but <clears throat> having a different record company that, that actively promoted the record helped help get it on the radio a little bit more. You once said about your second album, which was Land of the Bottom Line. Yeah. I thought I knew, but I didn't. Oh That's yeah. That's what you should have I named was, it. I thought, yeah, because I named the first record I, I know and uh, <laughs> made me sound like I, I knew what I was doing, so I, I was thinking of that as, as an alternative title. I should have known, but I didn't. I really didn't know at all. <laughs> yeah, I was wrong. Keeping emotions in tone lyrically, turning the tables is a special knack of yours. Give us some examples of this special knack. Oh, let's see. Well, there's one, one song from the, the Land of the Bottom Line record has a song that's called Full of Life in it. Uh, the, the first line is, uh, life is full of disappointment. Yes, and I am full of life. And uh, so it's, it's hard for me to, to, to speak the uh, uh, lines that, that would give you an example of that. There's also another song from that record that comes to mind. Um, it's about, it's called Jailbirds in the Big House, and it's about uh, prisoners in, in, uh, in, in, uh, in jail. And the first line is, uh, they built the prison by the freeway just to rub it in. <laughs> and because uh, that, that was a, a prison that was, was in New Jersey that inspired I'll that. tell you, you what well, I'm just listening, and I'll tell you, you have a such a keen sense of viewing things that, you know, normal, I guess everybody just doesn't see things the way you do. Yeah, I, kind I, of a special ability. Well, I try to, I try to pay, pay attention. I always, uh, uh, the, the songs that I've always liked, I felt like that one well, in life in general, I've, I've learned the most from songs than from any other, any other uh, form, like uh, movies or TV or, or, or music on the radio hmm. or, 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 uh, or books. It, was, it seemed like the music that I, music that I heard on the radio and music that I bought in record stores, kind of uh, uh, was 
was the the place that inspired the thing that inspired me most. So um, that's interesting because yeah. that's made people view the world through your eyes. You know. Yeah, it's it's my own my own point of view, and and uh, I feel like I express myself the best mm -hmm. through through songs and and. Uh, Away with words. Yeah, and because I can get them in the right order, <laughs> and because uh, when I speak, I always you can erase and go back and right, do them all right, over again. Yeah, <laughs> whenever I speak, I always feel like uh, I think later on I wish I would have said said uh -huh. this, or I'm, and I'm constantly how, haunted how by the things did, I wish I would have said. How long did it take you to write a song? It varies sometimes. I know you're doing two songs a month. Yeah, yeah, I've got a deadline tomorrow. <laughs> uh -oh. Tomorrow, so I, I started it. I started it today. I'll see how if I, how if I can get it done. Because you've been known to do two songs a month. That's my my schedule. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, the you first, maintain? Uh, I've been pretty much on schedule. Yeah, uh, I met uh, here at this at this, at this club. Uh, Godfrey Godf Daniels in Bethlehem, Godf Pennsylvania, yeah. where we're doing it. Give Godfrey Daniels. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's my your home. My home club. Yeah. yeah, I used to live in the basement. <laughs> and. Uh, uh, I met Jack Hardy here, uh, uh -huh. who is a, 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 a songwriter from New York City. Who he was the first person I met who wrote songs on a schedule, and he, he worked on. He, at the time, he was working on finishing a song a week. Mm. And I never met any. Uh, I knew novelists and other kind of writers wrote that way, where they would get up every morning and work on yeah. their their writing. But I didn't know that songwriters did that that kind of thing. And he was finishing a song a week at the time, and and the the music he played that night. Uh, I'd say 90% of it had been written in the, in the previous year and a half. So I, I didn't. I was, and that was not like 90 minutes of music, and mm. I, didn't, I didn't know that that, that was possible. So mm. that was that was really inspiring because I would just sit around and wait for for the inspiration mm. to strike. And this way, he said that that sitting around is is a is a cop out because if you if you go after the songs, you're going to write more songs. Mm -hmm. You're going you're going you're going to improve faster. Uh, if you work at it, and sometimes you don't know if the inspiration is there until you mm -hmm. until you go after it. Let's talk about Jack's Crows. You have a video out on a song from that album. Yeah, the, uh, this is the first video I, I actually never expected to do a video uh, of of anything. And uh, a, a, a director and a filmmaker came, called me up from New York City. He's originally from Virginia, but was living in New York City and, and working on on movies. At the time, and uh, he had never done a music video, so he said he, he liked my music, and he asked. Uh, so we we got together, and uh, and the the the, uh, the video was done for the cost of the rental of the the equipment. He called in all his uh, his favorites from uh, from friends who worked in in, in mm -hmm. films, and, mm -hmm. uh, and we were able to do it. We did it one day, and uh, where where'd you tape that? We one? taped that in New Jersey. Okay. Yeah. What inspired you to write that song? Well, I guess uh, Order for see, seeing, seeing the uh, seeing the uh, well, where I grew up in, in New Jersey, seeing that turn from from a heavily wooded uh, area into housing developments, and then seeing that happen again uh, around here. Yes, uh, it just kind of uh, seeing the landscape change from mm -hmm. from fields to. Uh, to houses, houses in the fields. Yeah, to houses that didn't look too good. <laughs> Your fans get a kick out of a song called Easy Off. Oh, that one. It's, it's How a, about ending a relationship? Well, it's kind of, it's, uh, it's called The Pilot Light Is Out on Our Oven of Love. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Can you that's give my, a... That's my mom's favorite song. Could, yeah. Um, when are you going to put that on now? Um, possibly the next next one. I, it's, it's one of those ones that's, uh, it's, it works well live, but it had, I haven't been able to get it. Haven't been able to get it on a, on a recorded version. I, I may be able, uh, maybe doing something, maybe some kind of a live recording, and maybe that'll be on it. I heard that's a great song. I, I, I like it. it a lot. <laughs> yeah, it, it's my mom's favorite song. Is it? Uh, if you weren't a, a singer and entertainer, what was your second choice of of a career? Oh, let's see. Uh, so, uh, since I'm not really trained for anything else, I, I, I think sometimes I would be a good mattress tester That's because exactly I like to sleep. Yeah. You like to sleep, huh? Yeah. Because <laughs> I never get enough of it, I guess. Do you think you'll ever become known as a country entertainer, or would you prefer to stay in the field that we are, we're talking about here as a uh, folk singer, basically? I guess it depends on which what dire direction the songs go. If, uh, if they... Uh, because it seems like they have a life of their own. But I think um, the music I've always liked in country music has been close to, 
close to the f the folk and bluegrass people, mm -hmm. people like uh, uh, like I mentioned, Amy Lou Harris yeah. and Flint Scruggs, Flint Scruggs and. Uh, Oh, let's see. There's how <coughs> how close Ricky was Skaggs. Jim Croce to your type of music? I think that's really pretty close. He was yeah. close. I yeah, love his music because of the real folk blues kind of a uh, kind of a, a a background, and that that's the storytelling songs is, and the it? humor and, and that kind of thing. John Prine and yeah, Steve John, Goodman, you know, people I, I've I've always whose music I've always loved. So I think um, I'll probably be somewhere uh, somewhere between folk and country. I probably won't. Uh, I probably won't ever uh, sound like. Uh, you ever play bluegrass festivals? Uh, yeah, but not. None. But not so much doing what I do. I, okay. I've played. There's a, a festival out in um, uh, Colorado called the Rocky Mountain F Folks Festival. It's put on by the Telluride people. Mm -hmm. So um, it's it's it, like, that's close to a bluegrass, but not. Uh, not a real, tr no, rig traditional bluegrass festival. Have your travels taken you out of the country? Yeah, I've played in Canada, and uh, and this this year I got to go to over to Europe. And How is your music received in Europe? It's uh, uh, where they can understand the language. It's, <laughs> okay. it's, it, it goes over pretty well. And in, in Italy, <coughs> uh, it was the whole going to Italy was worthwhile just for the food. <laughs> but uh, but people people didn't always get every line or because okay. a lot of my the uh, double edged job yeah they missed right it. yeah some of that they didn't they didn't get it all but they they, they still seem to like it. What's the future for John Gorka? Yeah, people ask me about that, and I uh, I guess I uh, I'm doing what I love to do uh, now. I just would like to get get better at it and uh, have have some kind of a, a family life as as well. Um, I don't. You're um, not looking for the ties that bind, are you? When you say family life. Oh, yeah. That wouldn't that wouldn't be a bad thing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Because no. I, you know, I don't. You know, when you start when you start doing what you're doing, your the time on the road is yeah, it's, incredible. It's, right. Yes. Yeah, it's it's. You uh, play 200 nights a year on the road. It's yeah. It's a little bit too. It's it can, can be too much, and uh, so I, that's something I would like to to keep in my life. Otherwise, uh, it doesn't seem like. Uh, there's anything to work for if, if it's just uh, <coughs> uh, if it's just traveling around. It's it's it's, it's getting back to that the right. video talking about being a train. Then I'd just be rolling rolling on the uh, rolling at the, on the tracks with somebody else driving. That's part of it, though. I think that's part of the job. Oh yeah, I love to play and and I love to I love the travel. It's, it's you love playing in front of a live audience. Oh yeah, yeah. That's that's my. I, I, you uh, communicate better. Well, better than <laughs> better than uh, um, than in interviews, I guess. <laughs> You're doing great. You're, you, we're both doing. We're doing all right today. Oh good. Oh, and that seems go, but it doesn't always go this way. So I, I'm just keeping my. I want to thank you, John, oh, sure. for being on the show. Oh, sure, it's thank been you. a pleasure to have right. John Gorka. And uh, if you're in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, be sure you stop into Godfrey Daniels and check out to see if John's here or some other good shows. And uh, wherever you go, see if John's around. If he is, definitely stop in and pay him a visit and tell him you heard it in Suds and Country. This is Herb. Until next time, keep smiling and keep it Suds and Country.